Hello and thank you for watching this week's WeatherQuest farming forecast. Well, over the last weekend we've had some pretty unsettled weather as Storm Arwen brought some very strong winds in places as well as some disruptive snow and widespread frosts across the British Isles. But it has turned a little bit milder as we've gone into Tuesday. Will that continue though? We'll take a look in a few moments. First though, just going to take a quick look back at the amount of rainfall we saw over the month of November. So this here is the rainfall anomaly up until the 30th of November as estimated by the radar. And what you can really see that stands out is how dry it's been across southern England, southern Wales, and into parts of the Midlands. With those orange colours there showing five to 10% of the normal amount of rainfall you would expect to see through the month. So exceptionally dry across southern parts of the British Isles through the month. Elsewhere, it's a little bit more mixed. I mean, the bulk of places were below average in terms of rainfall. Some coastal areas saw closer to or slightly above average, even down here into parts of East Anglia. As for much of the time, we were under northerly winds with showers feeding in off the North Sea and around the Irish Sea and Liverpool uh, Bay. So some places near the coast actually were quite wet and saw frequent showers, uh, but for inland areas, many places were below average, away from northern and northwestern Scotland, which was above average, as you'd expect, with quite a lot of rain feeding in there over the course of the month. Now, how does that fit in the overall picture of how autumn as a season has gone? Well, it's the fairly dry November combined with the relatively dry September have fed into this quite strongly. So you can see many southern and central areas in those brown colours showing a below average amount of rainfall for the season as a whole. We did have a pretty wet October, so actually that does show through in some places, especially the Lake District, parts of southern Scotland, even down into parts of southern England as well. Some places end up closer to or above average, as well as then northwestern Scotland. Uh, so that does feed through. It was very wet in October, but overall the season as a whole for many places was drier than it would normally be uh, for this period um, of September, October and November. So let's have a look what's in store over the next few days. This is the jet stream currently on Tuesday to the north of us. We've got quite a lot of mild air feeding in behind that. We've got highs of 10, 11, 12 degrees in places, very contrasting to the close to freezing temperatures we saw over the weekend and last week. But it will turn a little bit colder as we go into Wednesday. This front here pushing southwards and that introduces some colder air to the north of the jet stream across the British Isles. For Wednesday and into Thursday. Before then the jet stream moves more over the British Isles and we see something slightly milder, more unsettled with several areas of low pressure coming through. Before into the weekend that sinks southwards and we get into this deep trough and that does pull some colder air over us again and you can see this ridge out to the west with some milder air tucked in behind that but to end the week we're in that colder uh, slot of air um, under that broad upper trough of low pressure. So you can see that here in the, here in the air mass animation. Tuesday we've got some pretty mild air over us, these yellow and green colours showing some, some fairly mild air. But as that front clears through we see some colder air pulled in from the north, the return of frost, the potential for some wintry precipitation in places. Before then the next system comes through and that brings another spell of milder temperatures for many particularly southern places. Before then that clears and we get another push of northwesterly cooler air. So it's a little bit up and down over the next few days. There will be some frosts on some nights, but other nights will be a little bit milder uh, with some rain, whereas when it's colder we might see some wintry precipitation, some sleet or snow in places as well. So looking at that in a little bit more detail, this is Tuesday afternoon. I've got this area of low pressure to the north of Scotland and this fairly active front pushing across Ireland and into Western Britain. Quite breezy as well, some quite tight isobars. Uh, for many southern areas and as we go through Tuesday and Tuesday night and overnight into Wednesday that area of low pressure uh, and front associated rain clears eastwards we get this little trough running southwards across the British Isles as that low pressure pulls away into Wednesday and then by the time it's out here over the Baltic states the British Isles on Wednesday is in a fairly breezy and chilly northwesterly flow we've got wintry showers coming down the North Sea um, and into parts of the Irish Sea as well so back to that classic northwesterly flow of showers around the coasts but further inland those showers will generally be fairly isolated and now when it when it's a situation with showers like this the best way of staying on top of where the showers are is to look at WQ radar here you can see five minute rainfall radar as well as the precipitation type so you can see whether the showers are falling as rain sleet or snow or wet snow uh, so that's really helpful as well this time of year when often it can be very marginal as to what uh, precipitation they're falling at and as well, you can see all the uh, weather station observations from the Met Office station network. So looking a little bit further ahead into Thursday, with plenty of clear skies in central areas, it's going to be a pretty sharp frost 
for Thursday morning. Perhaps near the coast, a little bit more marginal uh, with a little bit more cloud around, but a fairly widespread cold and frosty start to the day on Thursday with plenty of clear skies. These wintry showers continue a few inland as well before then largely you get this little ridge of high pressure builds as those showers and trough move out to the east before then this next area of low pressure pushes in a band of rain um, into Thursday. And with this, this band of rain, it's going to be hitting some pretty cold air during Thursday evening. So actually it could initially fall as sleet or snow over some high ground areas, but largely it will then turn to rain as we do see some slightly milder air come behind that overnight Thursday and into Friday. So through, through Friday itself, that band of rain is going to push eastwards. We do get this next developing area of low pressure then push through. And um, you can see in this animation here running along southern England uh, during the day on Friday, bringing some rain, uh, potentially some blustery winds as well. There is quite a lot of uncertainty over the exact track and timing of this area of low pressure. Some models at this stage by Friday evening still have the centre of the low up over here and actually then push it eastwards across northern Britain. So still bringing some rain, still bringing some unsettled conditions, but the exact track and timings of that still a lot of uncertainty um, associated with that. So one to keep an eye on, but it does look like at some point over Friday, we will see that area of low pressure come through and bring some potentially wet and perhaps windy weather as well. So for the rest of Friday, that clears away. Like I say, it might be that it lingers a little bit longer into Saturday, depending on the exact track and timings of it. But by the end of Saturday, it will be likely out to the east. And then we're back into another colder northwesterly flow with the potential for a frosty start on Saturday morning, um, as well as frequent showers around northwestern coastlines. And I think with this more northwesterly as opposed to northerly earlier, some eastern coasts might be just a little bit drier. But you can still see as this low pressure pulls away, there is potential for a little bit of rain um, during the day. So with all this going on over the next few days, these various areas of low pressure and showers and the uncertainty, the best way of staying on top of the forecast is to speak directly to one of our forecasters. They're available every day from 6 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. on the number shown on screen at £1.55 a minute plus network access charges. And they'll be able to talk you through any uncertainty in the forecast and give you the best heads up and outlook for whatever it is you're trying to do. So looking a little bit further ahead into the early part of next week, this is just a snapshot of how things might look on Monday. We've got this area of next area of low pressure pushing in from the Atlantic, bringing some pretty unsettled conditions to uh, the UK and then into northwestern Europe. You can see elsewhere it's relatively cold. This is an early morning snapshot, so pretty widespread frost, some wintry precipitation as well, but strong area of high pressure built over Scandinavia and then another area of low pressure down in the southeast. So it does look like things are going to continue to stay unsettled through next week. This here is the pressure anomaly as averaged across the whole week. So it kind of gives an idea of how things are going to uh, continue through the week. And you can see generally for much of Western and Southern and parts of Central Europe, these blue colors here showing low pressure. So generally an unsettled feel to the weather, uh, potentially quite a lot of rain, some periods of colder air, um, but that high pressure staying relatively strongly built across Scandinavia. So in terms of rainfall, many southern and central parts are above average in the amount of rainfall that they'll see, particularly across parts of the Pyrenees, southern France, good anomaly there for fairly wet conditions. But even into the UK, it looks like it will be wetter than average. In terms of temperatures, well, it's going to continue to bring some quite cold air in from the northwest with these areas of low pressure. They will be briefly interspersed with some milder air. So each time an area of low pressure comes through, we'll get a wadge of mild air, but quite often then behind it, we'll see cooler air return. So overall, the signal for the week is below average in terms of temperatures. A very strong anomaly across Scandinavia, well below average conditions, some very cold air um, sitting over there, but it is slightly milder down to the southeast. So to summarize that next week, Generally, it will be quite chilly. There will be some periods of milder air, but it will be quite unsettled. Uh, we'll see frequent areas of low pressure come through. And in terms of temperature, you can see that anomaly here. This here is the chance of seeing below average temperatures across various parts of the UK. The stronger the blue, the more likely we are of seeing the colder than normal temperatures. And you can see generally through that week, there's a good signal there of most places seeing below average temperatures. Although quite a weak signal at times, because to do with the timing of various areas of low pressure coming through, like I mentioned, there will be some incursions of milder air with those low pressure systems. But you can see as we go into the middle part of the month and into the end of the month, that signal kind of phase away. Looking at it the other way around, we've got the chance of above average temperatures, obviously strongly shown here is Tuesday today, very mild. Um, and then a weak signal here where we've got that strong signal for below average temperatures. 
But you can see into the second part of the month, those chance of seeing above average temperatures begins to creep back in as we do see the winds return more to the west or southwest. It begins to become a little bit milder. So the second half of the month, I think, will be slightly milder relative to normal than the first. And this here is the uh, pressure anomaly for that third week of December. So that kind of shows it nicely here, really. We've got high pressure generally building across southern parts of Europe, so many places below average um, in terms of rainfall. The jet stream lifts north, so that's going to bring in some milder air, some milder air from the south um, across the UK and much of Europe as well. Perhaps Scandinavia still staying below average. Um, you can see for the UK, it's kind of marginal in terms of how many fronts we'll see. There's good signal for low pressure to the northwest of us. So that's going to continue to push some fronts through. Uh, so southern areas will likely be the driest uh, places in the northwest still seeing some rain at times, but it will be generally milder than average for most places. Into the last week of uh, December, uh, we see a strong anomaly for high pressure building across much of Europe. Um, so generally dry, or uh, drier than average, there still will be some fronts coming through. So generally drier than average in terms of the rainfall. And with the jet stream continuing to be generally to the north of us, the temperatures will tend to be above average as well as we go into that last week of December. So to summarise this week, it's still going to be generally quite cold at times with the risk of frost and wintry precipitation, although there will be some periods of milder air between that, so worth staying on top of the forecast. As we go into next week, it will remain generally unsettled with low pressure coming through, but there will be some colder temperatures as well, uh, so staying fairly chilly through next week. But as we go into the second half of December, it will become slightly milder and more settled from the middle part of the month onwards. So thanks for watching this week's video. As ever, you can keep up to date with the day-to-day -day forecast for East Anglia and the British Isles on our social media, and you can leave any comments below. Thanks for watching.